Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a video on 5.1 of our Algebra 2 textbook, Monomials, Rules of Exponents. For this first slide, I'd actually like you to pause this video and just take a moment and read through these rules. To the left are the rules in symbols, and to the right are the rules in words. So please pause the video and take a minute or two and just read through these real quickly, just to re-familiarize yourself with them. I'm pretty sure you've learned all of these either in Algebra 1 or in some advanced algebra course, but they're certainly worth refreshing even if just for a minute or two. So go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, I hope you've had a moment to re-familiarize yourself with those uh, rules of exponents. And now we're going to look at some specific examples, and I'd like you to take detailed notes on these examples into your packet as I do them here on the video. Those notes might be checked tomorrow. So we'll start with number one. We're supposed to simplify the product of these two monomials, negative two a cubed b times negative five a b to the fourth. So what I think I'm gonna to do to start is I'm gonna take all of the coefficients and place them in the front. All the factors of a will come second, and then all the factors of b will come third. So watch how I organize this, and I think it'll be very helpful. So as you may have noted, I grouped everything together with all the coefficients in front, all the factors of A, and then all the factors of B. Now I'm just going to multiply the negative 2 times negative 5, getting me 10. And then here in the middle, if I multiply powers of the same base, I retain the base and add the exponents. And this guy right here has an exponent of 1. And the same thing here, this guy has an exponent of 1 too. So we're going to have 10A to the 4th, and then B to the 5th. And that's really all there is to it. So maybe in looking at this first example, this idea of reorganizing the similar things together might be something that would help you. Okay, looking at number two, we have s squared over s to the tenth. And the rule is if you're dividing things with the same base, you retain the base and then you subtract the exponents. So I'm going to go on to say s to the two minus ten power. Well, we know that 2 minus 10 is negative 8, so now I'll write s to the negative 8 power. But in an algebra class, you're really not supposed to leave an answer with a negative exponent. So I'm going to bring that s to the negative 8 down to the denominator, making it 1 over s to the 8th. And this would be considered a simplified answer, more simplified than the one before it, because we don't want to leave an answer with a negative exponent. Okay, let's move to number three. This one's actually really tricky. I'd like you to put a star by this one because you're going to want to revisit it before our next quiz. Hint, hint, hint. Two and three are actually really similar. We're dividing things that have the same base. The base in number two is s, but the base in number three is 10. But the same concept still applies. We're going to subtract the exponents just like we had done in number two. So I'm going to retain my base of 10, but then I'm going to set up a subtraction problem with x minus 3, x plus 3, minus the expression x squared minus 6. Okay, now in order to do this subtraction, I'm going to need to FOIL the first groupings of x minus 3 and x plus 3. And that's going to get me x squared minus 3x plus 3x, which are going to cancel out, and then minus 9. So watch what I do in my next step. Okay, now I'm going to subtract one expression from the other. So x squared minus 9 minus x squared minus 6 becomes x squared minus 9 minus x squared plus 6 because I'm going to actually distribute this negative on through. And what I notice here in this result in the exponent is that the x squared and the negative x squared are going to cancel out. And we're just left with negative 9 plus 6, which is negative 3. But like in example two, we can't leave an answer with a negative exponent. So I'm going to say that this is the same as 1 over 10 to the third power. And then, of course, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So this answer is 1 1,000th. That's definitely a cool problem. I really like it a lot. Now, in example four, we're raising b squared to the power of 3. And the rule says that if you're ever raising a power to a power, you multiply the powers together. So this is going to be b to the 2 times 3, or b to the 6th power. Okay, just for fun, I just want to show you that last problem, number 4, thinking about it in a slightly different way. 
When you cube something, fundamentally, you are multiplying the thing by itself three times. So another way you could think about this is b squared times b squared times b squared. And now we're, we're multiplying three powers together that have the same base. So we can retain the base and add the exponents. The base would be 3, and 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So we really, in fact, get the same answer using that method than we did in the first method. The first method's a little quicker, though, but I just did want to show you that you do have a couple of options in how you think about this.